Whenever I review a toy for Plastic Addict, I always kind of hope that the toy will see it as something of an intervention, that it will change its life and become a respectable member of the Transformers community. I mean, who knew that after his review, R.I.D. Bruticus would move on to become a very successful rapper? Yeah, I'm gonna heal him. Hit me and you die. Don't touch me. I'm gonna eat out both your eyes. I retract the respectable comment. Sadly, for a few, it's just the first step on a downward spiral. Which brings us to today's review subject. Uh-huh. We're back to Hotshot. He's been my favorite whipping boy since first reviewing him in episode 6, with his lack of shoulders, creepy grimace, and an incredibly intrusive gimmick. But eventually, you just run out of jokes. There's only so many more comments I can make about a helicopter plugging onto his ass. Hotshot took the review really harshly, and went to get a makeover in time for the Energon toy line. So we're going to look at that version today. Naturally, we start in vehicle mode, where... He's a yellow sports car. That's about it. I mean, honestly, there's really only so much I can say here. I mean, he's got some paint across his air vents to kind of break up the yellow a little bit. And it's not the eye-bleeding color that the original Hotshot was, but it just feels plain. If I can credit the movie toys with anything, it's how many variations they can make on a yellow sports car's deco. This needed something. Race stripes, trim around the bottom, anything. I mean, as it stands, the solid yellow and the blockier design just makes the vehicle look generic. I mean, it actually takes away from the charm that the original vehicle mode had. And you know that I'm not happy when I'm complimenting the original Armada Hotshot. I will be fair though, there are some features to this toy that actually do help it stand out among Deluxe Transformers. For starters, you do have doors that do open up, just like an actual model car or an alternator would have. I mean, true, it just exposes a bunch of robot mode junk on the inside, but, you know, it's still better than nothing. And the hood follows suit including an engine block molded in with an Autobot emblem painted and molded in. So, while the deco is boring and it does look kind of plain, it does have a few features that you could only find in alternators at the time, and among deluxe transformers were very rare at the time. You can also arm the vehicle mode with his missile launcher, which actually has a unique peg-in system that keeps it from having any holes on top of the vehicle like you'd expect. So, boring to look at, but at least it does have a few more functions than normal car modes. Of course, Armada Hotshot saving grace was his vehicle mode too. We only got to the bad stuff when we hit robot mode. Let's see if the sequel follows suit. Help! I thought the Creo line was brand new, cause I see a pile of bricks here. I've seen G1 toys described as bricks that had more definition and style to their forms than this. I will start by telling you that this thing's transformation was basic and boring. The car mode's kibble just kind of folds away in panels, and not very well utilized panels at that. They just kind of hang there, including a giant backpack made of a third of the car. It's incredibly uninspired and boring. It's very much throwaway at this point. And the worst element of the transformation, the head just kind of juts out from the backpack on a stem. This means it pegs into the top very loosely, meaning it has no head articulation, just like his original toy. Though it does let me enact my one fantasy with Hot Shot. Hey, 
A guy can dream, okay? The sculpt of the head doesn't do it any favors either. There's no weird grin, but his expression is completely blank. I can't even call this a serious or battle-ready face because the eyes are sculpted so softly. It looks more like he's trying not to give away a really good poker hand. The blandness extends to the chest, which is just a big solid block of plastic, and blocky, scrawny arms to match. Arms that are halfway down on his chest, no less. Between that and the overall shape and proportions, it just... It, everything just looks off. You expect an Autobot warrior to have a larger torso than waist. Instead, going straight down from torso to midsection, Hotshot looks overweight, like some cliché toy nerd. Wait. So, how about articulation? I mean, the shoulders do have ball joints, so it has to be better than the last toy, right? It's a complete opposite of the original. Instead of arms that couldn't move forward, you have arms that cannot move out to the sides. You've got double jointed elbows, but it doesn't really help since you can't really do anything with them other than point his arms straight forward. Which I guess actually does kind of work for him because that's the only direction he can hold a gun considering he's got no neck. Stop Decepticon or I'll... Oh, kill him all, and step back to your left. Ironhide, can you turn me, t t turn me that way? Also, due to his gimmick, he has no waist articulation. Gee, doesn't that sound familiar? The only other articulation he has is in the legs, which suffers from Energon hips, which is typical of the toy line, where big hinges jut out from the midsection in order to form any of the articulation in the toy's legs. This leads to some very awkward positionings for the legs that really don't amount to anything and don't have any real use. For Hotshot, this is especially true because he has no knees. I mean, the best thing I could say about the original Hotshot were how well the legs were articulated, and they go and ruin even that? <sighs> If this toy makes me compliment the original Hotshot again, somebody shoot me! Now I mentioned that this toy's gimmick is what hinders his articulation a lot, and that is because Energon Autobots, at least deluxe and mega-sized, had a gimmick called power linking, where they could form a set of legs or a torso, and then link using this system of interlocking pins. Doing this would create a larger robot and give you a lot more extra play option. I actually really like these kinds of gimmicks. I mean, it means that every single one you buy makes all the others you bought previously more valuable. And all the new ones you pick up automatically have a lot more things they can do. The more you get, the better they all get, which is a great little marketing strategy. So, let's see how it's done here. Let's see Hotshot's leg mode. No, 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 seriously, just change him into leg mode. Unfortunately, this is it. We've hidden the head and folded the arms back, and that's it. This means the combined mode has the same miserable articulation, along with even worse proportions. Together with his wave made Inferno, the torso ends up being way too long as a result from this. About the only neat thing you can do is extend Hotshot's arms, making a four-armed monstrosity from a two-armed monstrosity. And even then, it just looks like Hotshot wearing Inferno as a head. Since now he's basically a top-heavy version of Hotshot's robot mode, he really has the exact same limitations. The articulation's still crap, and it's even more useless here. There's really nothing else to say. I mean, this is barely another mode. So is it any better the other way around? Sadly... Yes. I do have to be fair, the torso mode has a nice look to it. The flip torso and the shoulders made from the midsection do work. I mean, it does look like he's wearing novelty giant boxing gloves, but he looks fine. Looks being the key word. Remember that lack of leg articulation? Those leg joints are now in his arms, meaning he can bend his arms forward at what are now elbow joints, and he can raise them at the shoulder but that's about it. 
and the arms really only work when bent. Straight down, they start hitting his leg mode partner. On some, you can't even get the arms down that far because of the kibble that gets in the way. He can at least get his arms to point forward and rotate at the bicep, but mostly, especially with his wave mate as the legs, you're looking at a plastic statue doing a Frankenstein impression. And with that reference, I count this as a Halloween episode. It's not like I could review anything scarier. Bottom line, this toy defines the word generic. From its vehicle mode lacking in detailing to the crude and blocky robot mode and uninspired combination modes, it's a toy that offers no personality. The articulation is almost non-existent. What joints it does have are useless. And it commits the greatest sin that a toy could possibly have. Being boring. And possibly being worse than its original toy. I have not decided yet. Since I'm partially responsible for Hot Shots Downward Spiral, the crew here at Plastic Addict has chipped in a whole $11.99 plus tax to get him a makeover, including a brand new paint job and plastic surgery. Let's see how it went. <laughs> Excellent! Okay, he's still got a lot of issues, but he's on the road to recovery and that is what is important. I am the plastic addict. I stay addicted so you can stay away. <laughs>